Okay, so we've got our site now. We've got context. Everything is starting to come together. Uh, I'm getting a real feel for the I, the location. At least that's the goal uh, of this crosstown, crosstown district in Kansas City. And the next step that I need to start doing is I need to start understanding exactly what the spaces are in the design and exactly what the spaces are going to be doing. So for this design fabrication um, project that I've been working on um, conceptually with students in an architectural design studio, one of the first steps that we need to look at is really getting an understanding of how the building program elements can start to fit into the site. And in the process of teaching this in the past, I've done bubble diagrams, I've asked for 3D models with descriptive language on volumetric bubbles so that they can really understand position and location and adjacencies. But I've kind of entered this perfect storm and we're, we need to start teaching visual programming. And we also need um, a, a further awareness or a more specific awareness of how program, programmatic elements work. So we started to look at exactly what could we do with visual programming and building programming, just to completely confuse ourselves with terminology, but also to tap into two reasonably difficult areas to learn. So I'm going to start building up a script in Dynamo, and then we'll bring that in to form it to see how it works out in context. So let's flip over to Dynamo and let's start building up a really simple script. So the first thing that we need is an area to contain and just a set of guidelines to contain the location for the programmatic elements. And so having worked with the site for a while now, we already know some basic dimensions of 120 by 50 in terms of length and width of the actual building site. Now in Dynamo Studio, there are really no units. Um, I'm just working strictly with numbers and that way things are fairly portable when they go to other platforms. So when I leave this, um, when I leave Dynamo Studio and export the data into, or the geometry rather, into format, 50 is going to be 50 feet. Um, so th that is set up and working fairly well for us. So we can keep things pretty simple. So when you see me typing in just a generic number, know that that actually is representing feet. So first thing that I need is a simple rectangle. Um, so I'm going to type in rectangle and we want by CS width and length. And that simply means I don't have to worry about um, where the rectangle is going to be, I'm perfectly happy with it. Ha perfectly, perfectly happy with it happening at the origin. And now you notice my other input, so I can move the origin around um, by plugging in an x y z coordinate, um, or I can leave it at center, which is perfectly fine with me. And then I just need to give it a length and width, which is a number. So I'm going to type in number, and then Control Copy, Control Paste, and I know my numbers are going to be 50 and 120. So as soon as I plug in those two values, I now have a basic building site. So now let's look at putting together a little bit of programmatic information. So the first thing that I want to do is just go ahead and bring in another number. Because programs often start with a simple quantity. And that quantity might be something like lead design office. So I've rechanged that number to have a new name, and I know my lead designer needs a 300 square foot office. I know that that is going to be, I need a variable set up. Um, I need something that is constantly going to give me an output of 300 square feet, but I want to be able to adjust that, and I want to be able to adjust the height. So I'm going to do a slider, a simple numeric slider, And I'm going to put in another number, and we'll call this number office height. So we know we don't want that to be zero. Let's go ahead and set that to 10. So these two are going to be a variable of each other. And essentially, I can set up a pretty simple division scenario where I take x and y, where x is my total square foot y is going to be very 
by my slider. And that's going to give me a number out. Then I can do a, another rectangle. Let's just copy and paste that. My width is going to be the variable coming from the division. My width is going to be, or my length rather, is going to be the variable here coming from that slider. So you can see now I've got a width of one foot, um, or excuse me, a length of one foot, and a width of 300. The larger I make the slider, the more that's going to change around on me. But I know that that number right there is always going to equal 300 or 300 square feet by how I have this mathematic equation set up. Cool. So next thing we want to do is go ahead and set up an extrusion. So we will do, um, this will be a curve extrusion, curve extrusion. as solid so my distance now is the height so that's how much that's going to go up the rectangle is my curve and so now I've turned that into a volume I can still adjust the slider so I'm always maintaining the integrity of 300 square feet but I can adjust those. And I, you know, obviously I want to do something that makes sense. That's not an appropriate office. But I know that I have a certain amount of push and pull that I can do to make this as a form begin to work for me. So the next thing that I want to be able to do is move this around. So to do that, I need to translate the geometry. So we'll do translate. geometry. So this is going to give me uh, an X, Y, and Z translation. So my inputs, first what's my geometry, and it's that solid box, and then my translation is going to be an X, Y, and Z value, and I can simply use another slider for that. So let's do control paste, and we'll just do two more. And just a little bit of housekeeping, let's go ahead and rename this length. Uh, let's put office on there first. Office length. Office x. Let's copy that. That'll be a little bit faster. Y. And Z. So if I put those sliders now, let's set them to zeros first. If I put these sliders into my XYZ translation values, X, Y, and Z, I now have something that will allow me to move that box around. Now you, you might be looking at this thinking, okay, why do I have two boxes? And that's simply because this translation, oops, extra piece there, this translation is a copy of the original curve. The original curve has a copy in it, or not a copy, but is built upon this rectangle. So I can come in and simply look at, I only want to see this last piece of information right here. So I might want to come in and turn preview off for the rectangle and turn the preview off for that initial extrusion. And so what I'm left with is this final resultant. Now, as I build up the complexity of this, I've got one more piece that I probably want to do, and that is adding in a little bit of color. So that way I can schematically see um, different spaces, different tonal values. So that is a, that way is a diagram that begins to make a little bit more, dis, more sense. So I want to bring in a display by geometry color. And so again, geometry to geometry. 
we'll hook those two together. And then I need a few sliders again to set my RGB values. So let's take this former slider and we will name it R. And we know we have 0 to 255 on our values. B. And G. A little bit out of order, order there, but I think you hopefully get the idea. So I need um, one additional piece of information because that's just asking for color, not RGB values. So we need to do color by RGB. The A is an alpha channel, and we can just put in a numeric slider for that, or just a number for that. So we now have the opportunity to see this, once I turn this preview off, as a box that I can vary the color by moving these sliders around. And then let's add in one more, as I mentioned, one more number, so that way I can actually see through portions of that box as well. Uh, and make that somewhat transparent. Control B lets me then navigate around the 3D space. And from here, it's as simple as saying, okay, well, I want to repeat this. So I'll select everything, Control C, Control V, move it over. But this time, rather than the office, maybe we want to make this the showroom. And rather than 300 square feet, we actually need something closer to 2,000. So immediately, everything is updated. Probably want to look at a slightly different arrangement in terms of length and width. Probably something with a different height. And definitely don't want those to overlap. So we can begin looking at moving that to a different location. bring that back in and make sure that that is sitting to the inside of our property. So given that, I can begin building things up. And for me as an educator, I've got two opportunities here that, that this begins to work really well with. I've got something that teaches a little bit about scripting in a very, very simple format. And then also I'm using the scripting to teach a fairly complicated thing to a second year or third year architecture student in terms of programmatic spaces, their adjacencies, and their relationship to a given site. So let's go ahead and open up the finished script. We'll save this as building program dash WIP for work in progress. And open the building program script. So you can see with this, I've got things located. I've got them working within, and I've included vertical circulation as key components of the building program, simply by building that up and establishing colors. So to bring this now into format and see it in context, file, and I'm going to send this to the web. We'll give this a name building program test I believe on I'm on about test 5 and publish so this only takes a second to to send this essentially up to my A360 storage and then when I go to format I have a dynamo window I'm going to refresh the dynamo window and I've got building program test five updated from five seconds, 16 seconds ago, 17 seconds ago. So take one second here to build. And then I can place that onto my site. Comes in as a family. And so I can really quickly set this up with a little bit of rotation. 90 degrees. And let's move this 
a little bit closer over. I know I'm going to have a little expansion joint there, so I'm just going to kind of get it close. It looks like it should be rotated around just a little bit, but we'll save everybody from watching me finagle it in and just look at it in terms of its context, where I think these different elements could land, how they might begin relating to the site. Now, this is a reasonably complicated script just by the sheer volume of variables that I have. If we go back into Dynamo, you can see I have built in a fairly long list of variables. And realistically, this is a very simple building program. Um, I've only done major spaces uh, and not even included spaces within spaces. So this is a fairly simple piece to look at, but each piece has a large number of variables in terms of color, location, um, square footage, length, height, etc. So I'm not going to do a lot of editing with something like this inside of Formit. But I, want you, I definitely want to show you what is available inside of Formit, and we'll look at a, a, another script in the next video, which is uh, much more concise and easier to control inside of Formit. But if I double-click on this, it essentially opens up that family, and I can make a manipulation on any surface, because those are now Formit objects, or if I'm in the Properties window, I also have the availability and access to all of the sliders that were in my Dynamo script. So I can begin tweaking and working with those as different objects in different locations. But for something this complicated with this many variables, probably best to bounce back into Dynamo, create a new iteration, and go from there. But it's that idea of iteration that's really important with scripting. If I were to just model this, it would take me much more time to actually go in and begin sliding things around. Um, and once I have sort of things in place at a first pass for you know more traditional computer modeling, I would be really happy. Probably not the best solution, but it would be done and I would keep moving on, uh, especially given as a student and a student experience trying to learn all of these different things. Taking the time to build a script up front gives you all of that opportunity on the back end of the process to be much more flexible, much more dynamic, and to be able to iterate through more solutions.